So Elon Musk has gotten into a bit of a Twitter back and forth with Bernie Sanders, unsurprisingly over taxes and presumably over the proposed billionaire's tax, which it seems is pretty much dead on arrival. Let's have a look at their Twitter exchange and see who may or may not be right as a result of this. So it starts off with a Bernie Sanders tweet, which is pretty much the same as many of his other tweets, basically trying to get taxes to go up and the government to spend more. Bernie Sanders says, we must demand, demand even, that the extremely wealthy pay their fair share, period. Now this of course is question begging. It is question begging, A, what is the fair share, and B, are they already paying it? Because taxes exist in the United States, and people like Elon Musk, for example, do in fact pay those taxes on income. Now, people will remark that he is a very wealthy person. However, he still pays taxes on the income that he is receiving, such as it is. To give you an example, he has option grants that he wants to exercise. He is going to need to pay about $15 billion of taxes on those option grants because they're being taxed as income, and he's paying federal taxes, state taxes of California, which is where he earned the bulk of the uh, earn earnings there, and also an additional income tax related, an additional income tax impost pertaining to investments. So around 55% of the value is being paid in taxes. So it's not as if no tax is being paid, which is a sentiment that some people like Bernie Sanders need, sometimes feel like they're going to present. In that, they're trying to argue that billionaires don't pay tax, which is patently not the case, particularly for Elon Musk in this situation. Elon Musk, however, then steps in and replies. Now, Elon Musk then steps in and responds. And the first response, of course, is a classic, I keep forgetting that you're alive, which is basically getting at Bernie Sanders' relevance, or in Elon Musk's view, his lack thereof. This is basically Elon Musk finding another way of saying, no one cares what you think, and I don't particularly care what you think. That's effectively what Elon Musk is getting at here, trying to point out what he perceives to be Bernie Sanders' irrelevancy, particularly as it pertains to policymaking, but in general terms as far as his rhetoric goes. Now, if we're looking at the ratios here, it does actually look like Elon Musk managed to ratio Bernie Sanders. So looking at this, Bernie Sanders has 192,000 likes, Elon Musk, 232,000 for his first one, and 112,000 for the second one, which I'll get to now. Then Elon Musk continues, want me to sell more stock, Bernie? Just say the word. So he's effectively being sarcastic here. It's been reported in some media outlets that Elon Musk offers to sell more stock. It is patently obvious this is sarcasm. I don't think it takes a genius to realize that he's being sarcastic about this, but nevertheless, it appears some reporters have glossed over it. So that's what we're seeing in terms of the Twitter back and forth with Elon Musk kind of trolling Bernie Sanders. And Elon Musk effectively ratioing Bernie Sanders right here. And of course, relatively unsurprisingly, Michael Burry has also leapt into the conversation, which should probably come as no surprise to any of us, given his views on Tesla, which have not been particularly positive. And it seems that Michael Burry still seems to think that Tesla might be overpriced, even though he has apparently exited his Tesla put position. So Michael Burry's take on this, of course, was, let's face it, Elon Musk borrowed 88.3 million shares, sold all his mansions, moved to Texas, and he's asking Bernie Sanders whether he should sell more stock. He doesn't need the cash, he just wants to sell Tesla. Then Michael Burry creates this graph that is plotting Tesla's share price, obviously plotting it right up here, where it's currently at a, the time of recording, around $1,000. However, apparently, Elon Musk had said way back here that Tesla was too high and he is not kidding. I think that is a little bit cute as far as these analogies go, in that all the way back at this too high bit, that was before a lot of progress. Tesla has sold a lot more vehicles, made a ton more progress toward becoming a major automotive manufacturer, it has that Hertz contract, for example, in addition to actually selling a lot more. So while back then, it could have been overpriced at that point, but something that was overpriced at one time might cease to become overpriced if they make significant progress. That's not saying that I believe it's currently fair value, but it does mean that his opinion on stock prices can change. Nevertheless, it's basically the idea 
that a CEO will often try to sell his or her shares or do an equity raise when those shares are highly priced. More or less the same basic logic here. However, Michael Burry does have a point. He has a point that Elon Musk likely does want to be raising capital and likely does want to be selling shares to raise money. Of course, that's unsurprising. And potentially, one of the motivations Elon Musk has is that he would like some cash, needs to be able to sell some shares, so is using this as a neat way to facilitate that sale. I'm not as negative as Michael Burry is, because I would argue that with the first sale, Elon Musk needed to pay a tax bill of $15 billion. With the second one here, Elon Musk is clearly being sarcastic, not saying that he is offering to sell shares to Bernie Sanders. I doubt Elon Musk cares at all what Bernie Sanders says. It's patently obvious from the nature of the tweets. But this could be one of many motivations behind some of the sales that might be going on. Now, some of the responses have been relatively hilarious as well. And I think some of the other responses to Elon Musk and Bernie Sanders have also been kind of classic. So one of my favorites is, holy fucking shit. I can't see my Twitter feed anymore. Elon Musk's balls are blocking my screen. That's probably my favorite of the responses, but there are still some other classic ones as well. So one response here is, this year, Elon alone will pay something like a thousand times as much in taxes as you have paid over your entire life. He's employed tens of thousands and popularized electric cars and landed a rocket. The highlight of your career was losing two presidential elections. Perspective, please. So that one has gotten 11,000 likes as well. Of course, the responses to this are not overwhelmingly positive. For example, Solar State here is effectively saying that this individual was sucking up to Elon Musk and should therefore be kind of ridiculed for it. So for example, promoting billionaires as the next messiah. They're giving you nothing, and this nothing is going to people who defend billionaires online. The meme is a little bit rubbish, but nevertheless, you can kind of see the tenor of the meme there. One day I pray that you and anyone else who posts such near-sighted things as this will understand. We do not do it to defend billionaires. We do it to defend freedom and the entire basis on which this country was founded and has thrived on. So effectively getting the idea here that people should be able to effectively go out and make money and we should be applauding billionaires for their ambition or acumen or their achievements rather than trying to cut them down in a tall puppy syndrome type manner. It also to some extent is getting indirectly at the idea that Bernie Sanders policies will ultimately filter down from billionaires to 100 millionaires to 10 millionaires to anyone. So this is the tip of the iceberg. And that is also what is implicitly behind this response. So from this exchange, we're obviously getting a back and forth on a divisive subject, where some people think that taxes should be on unrealized capital gains. And on the other hand, you have people who are not per se defending Elon Musk because he is a billionaire. They're defending him for perhaps a couple of reasons. One, they respect him going out and achieving becoming a billionaire. Even if he had a leg up to begin with, taking that amount of money he had to begin with and transforming it into being the wealthiest person in the world, that is not an easy achievement. Many people come from wealthy backgrounds and they achieve nothing and potentially squander their wealth. So we do need to bear in mind that even though he certainly had significant hope, he's taken that significant hope and made great things with it. The other part of the argument in favor of Elon Musk is everyone can see the writing on the wall that there's going to be scope creep in terms of these types of taxes on unrealized capital gains. Effectively, Bernie Sanders wants to tax unrealized capital gains. This could easily filter through to everyone else, and it's patently obvious that that could happen. Like, it is incredibly clear that the next in the firing line will just be a little bit less wealthy than billionaires, but still very wealthy. So people with $100 million, for example, they're not billionaires, but they're still very wealthy. They're in the top 1%. People with $10 million, I think still probably in the top 1%, depending on exactly which stat you're looking at in which country, still very wealthy, still a minority group that could be targeted by Bernie Sanders. They're next in the firing line. And then at that stage, well, you might as well just roll it out to everyone. So everyone ends up being in the firing line. So this can easily be extended to everyone, which is what people are concerned about. It's not that they are going out of their way to defend a billionaire. 
they're going out of their way to implicitly defend themselves and to defend the idea that while they might not have 10 million at the moment, some people may never have $10 million, many people won't, but it is something that people might aspire towards. And those aspirational goals being attacked is what people have a problem with. If they aspire to have a million dollars or 10 million or whatever it is, if that aspirational goal suddenly gets taught, steadily starts getting taken apart, people become concerned about that because all of a sudden their ambition, their goal, what they were trying to achieve has the rug pulled out from underneath them. And that is what people are worried about. Not Elon Musk per se, but what happens to them down the track. Now, some people, of course, are worried about the normative issue. Some people, of course, don't like the normative attacks on people like Elon Musk. That probably is not the majority of the people defending him. The majority of the people defending him are just trying to defend themselves in many ways. And hence why we're seeing this divisive rhetoric and this divisive back and forth going between Elon Musk and Bernie Sanders and the pylon that is occurring. Now, if you have any thoughts about whether Bernie Sanders is in the right or whether Elon Musk is in the right, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well. And I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well on the proposed billionaires tax, which ultimately appears to be not likely to get off the ground due to the inability for that to get through the Senate, particularly with Joe Manchin voting against it in addition to the Republicans. So if you have any thoughts about that, definitely do let me know. One thing I will note, however, on Joe Manchin is it's not one guy holding up progress in the Senate. It's a senator from the Democrats, plus all of the Republicans. It's not one guy having his own fiefdom and dictatorship. It's a majority and he's contributing to that majority. So before we pile on with Joe Manchin along those lines, him being one person getting in the way, I think that is disingenuous and to some extent disrespectful to just assume he will fall into line, even if it is a policy that is ultimately bad for him or bad for his electorate. So we do need to consider that when passing any of Joe Manchin's policy decisions. And in any case, those are my thoughts on it. A bit of an update about what's happening with Elon Musk and Bernie Sanders. Some interesting Twitter back and forth. I find it vaguely entertaining. Although the mainstream media seems to have completely messed up the interpretation of this. Regardless, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And hopefully I'll see you for future videos as well.